Hello, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. Um, I'm going to talk uh, for a few minutes about um, this uh, software package that anybody can use. It's called the Climate Reanalyzer. So, you know, you can just go to your local uh, news stations or favorite weather uh, channel or weather station to get um, weather forecasts and predictions uh, for, you know, a day out or two days out or a week out. and. Uh, you know, but what, what um, we're seeing is because um, climate change has um, changed the circulation patterns uh, significantly, um, it's uh, well worth uh, playing around with this software and you can uh, figure out what's going to happen in your own regions. And I'll demonstrate how you can, uh, how you can do that uh, in the software. So let me move the camera. Okay, so here we go. It's called uh, Climate Reanalyzer. Okay, so basically, if you just Google um, Google Climate Reanalyzer and click on the link, and this is what you'll get. So this is a University of Maine um, software um, package that anybody can use. It's free, and uh, you know, just sort of familiarize yourself with it. It's based on data, data, some databases and you can do a number of different things with it. Um, for example, uh, you can plot, you know, very colorful maps um, of the globe showing temperature or temperature anomalies. You can see how the climate is changing. You can do uh, graphs of different, like temperature versus time at a given location uh, for air temperature, sea surface temperature, you know, and there's more sophisticated things. You can look at the jet streams and see how they uh, move around the planet and uh, look at historical data. For example, you know, do plots of previous years and compare them or subtract them, things like that. But I want to show you the most basic things um, which, which I uh, use quite often in my videos. So. If you go to, so you can do maps and animations, these are forecasts. Um, you can look, look at historical data on a day-to-day -day basis for a particular site. And you can use um, data in the past to generate maps, um, time series, look at the sea ice and snow cover. So I highly recommend that you kind of play around with this, but this is the one I want to show you in particular today. So maps and animations, okay? So here we go. From the home page, maps and animations. And what we have here is we have, uh, you can choose different regions of the planet and uh, you can choose different variables like temperature, precipitable water, precipitation clouds, winds, things like that. So what you get is a color map here and um, the scales down here. So this happens to be temperature at two meters above the ground. So sea level temperatures um, and the scale is both in Celsius, Fahrenheit and Celsius. And what I often do is I look at Northern Hemisphere. Okay, so this is a view looking down on the Northern Hemisphere and this is temperature at two meters. I often look at the temperature anomaly. Okay, which is the it's a difference. So you take the average from 79 to 2000, take the present uh, conditions at, at today, you know, there, you know, at a particular time and, and uh, date, uh, time and date, and it shows you the anomaly. So, uh, and the scale is here is in Fahrenheit and Celsius. Now, if you do a movie, if you just generate this and it, it clicks on a movie. Now, Make sure that you're using Internet Explorer. If you're using Firefox or some of the other browsers, this doesn't work properly. So what, it, what it's doing is it will cycle through. Um, every update is three hours. Universal time, that goes to Greenwich Mean Time, which is the time in Greenwich, England. Um, so you can correct for that depending on your location. Just go Google Greenwich, England time and then correct for your, the time where you are based on, on adding or subtracting to this. So this is just cycling through and this is showing um, 
the anomalies um, over time, um, which I often use this to show um, what's happening. So um, depending on your location, on the, I like to do, use this one because it shows me what's going on in the Arctic and uh, it also shows what's happening here. And what we're seeing is we're, we're, we're starting to see a pattern shift. There's less cold air, there's more warm air. Uh, but I'll talk about that in a different video. Right now, it's just how do you, how you use this. So if I go click on temperature, it still cycles through the movie, um, but then it um, does it in terms of temperature. This is absolute temperature. Um, and, uh, you know, jet stream is also another one which I like to do, to do because this shows the movement of the jet streams, the high altitude winds that are guiding storms. Um, and that's a 250 millibar, which so it's up fairly high in the atmosphere. This is, um, you know, roughly 10 or 11 kilometers um, altitude, something like that. Um, you know, you could look at the southern hemisphere. You can look at the, um, and it still cycles through because it's in movie mode. You can look at the world, you know, which is an interesting one. So these are the jet streams for the world or the temperature anomalies here um, for the world. So it cycles through. So this is very, very easy uh, to use. Um, to interpret it is a bit more difficult, but you know, if, if you wanna zero in on a location, let's say you're in, in uh, North America, so you know, US East say, you know, you can click on this, you can look at the temperature um, over time, you know, cycle through over time. So you can figure out where your location is, um, you know, what state you're in, where you're located. And you can see, you know, three hour forecast. This is the global forecast system model. So you can see um, why the temperature is changing. You can see the night, day to night uh, temperature changes. You can see uh, you know, if you go and click on the jet streams, um, there's no jet streams here, but there is, these, these parameters do change depending on the view, but you can look at surface winds, for example, and you can see what the winds are expected in your location, or you can look at precipitation and clouds. So we've got rain, mixed rain and snow, or freezing rain and uh, snow. So then depending on where your location is, right you have the time so if you're here you can see you know within three hours you can estimate you know when it's going to start to snow when it's going to stop so you can do your own uh, uh, weather forecasting with this sort of thing um, so these are all these uh, images here um, on this page um, you can also uh, do things like uh, uh, you can go to time series. So this is uh, data. So let's, for example, it's set for temperature, a thousand millibars near the surface. You know, there's different data sets that you can select. And if you just do a plot, for example, um, it's not doing anything. Um, so let's go back. Why isn't it doing anything? It's temperature, 1,000 millibar, annual average. You know, uh, maybe just select a different database. I don't know why it didn't, and then plot. Uh, still not doing anything. Okay, I don't know why that feature is not working properly. Um, let's go back to the home and let's do some time series and let's see if those work uh, so we'll try this again region is the world let's do a plot see if we have more luck here okay here we go so this is a certain database this is a temperature at, at the surface um, and annual temperature so it's degrees celsius versus year so it shows the fluctuation from year to year so this is 98 this is where the temperature was really warm this is the world, right? And you can do different regions, for example, US Northeast, uh, let's say the US West. Let's see how that works and plot it out. Here we go, the US West. So you can see 
you know, how the temperature varies and, you know, the big increase here and so on. So there's lots of other parameters. You can do different wind speeds, you can do precipitation, clouds. The, there's many, many different parameters. So I hot and you can do it at different levels through the atmosphere. So a thousand is near the surface, 500 millibars, about five kilometers up. You drop a 100 millibar roughly every kilometer. So this would be about 1.5 kilometers. This would be about four kilometers, five kilometers, six kilometers, seven kilometers. You know, it's not quite linear. This will be near the uh, near the jet stream level. So you have all of these different choices um, in in this um, this software. So uh, play around with it, and uh, you'll find. Uh, let me get rid of this and go back to home. So play around with it. Um, this was just added, uh, sea ice and snow cover. Uh, looks like you can do a movie, you know, so 2013 January. Let's do uh, 2012, um, you know, uh, uh, September or something, okay? And then we'll play the movie. So here we go. Okay, so this shows you um, this shows you, it's cycling through, and it shows you the sea ice change um, in the Arctic for September 2012. This is where the sea ice minimum happened, um, and then it's stopped and it recycles. Okay, so there's lots of different things. It's very good software, highly recommended. Um, so I'll end off here. Play around with it. Um, if you have problems or questions, put comments right on the uh, Facebook page and I'll um, try to answer them. Thank you.